Welcome back to Cigar Time. Here we all are. It's Alex Bradley month, and we're honored again to have our colleague from Alex Bradley. We have on my right, Sam Phillips, who's the Executive Vice President of Marketing. Good to see you again. Yep. It's nice see to you. see all nice of you again. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice to trip back again. I can't nice stay away. Yeah. I can't stay I away. I'm in Philly. Cheese steaks, you guys. Uh, pretzel, soft pretzels. Yeah. Yeah. Soft pretzel. Tasty cake. Yeah. Tasty cake. Tasty cake. Tasty cake. Wow. Now, now, but tasty cakes aren't fair because tasty cakes are everywhere now. I know. Uh, they came from here. Right. Of course they came from here. They get the chemicals from other places, but Beautiful. the cakes themselves right. used to come from here. <laughs> did you meant, did I hear you say the Phillies? No. Philly no. cheese steaks. Philly cheese steaks. Oh, Philly I mean, the Phillies are here, too. Oh, don't worry about it. Sometimes. <laughs> and we have the playa. Jonathan Lipson, who's the regional sales manager of Alec Bradley. Good to oh. see you again. Good to see you guys again. I and we player. have our esteemed panel with us again. Paul is still out in the fields. He's lost. Hard work, he's, he's lost. He's lost. I think he's lost. <laughs> no, Paul, he is. Hopefully nobody buried him in the field. Yeah, I, I, the last time oh, I Paul, saw him, he had a plow uh, behind his ass trying to get through the fields. Ass. Yes, that's one of those things that slept the... Uh, the donkey? Donkey, yeah. Donkey, yeah. Wow. Donkey, you know, well, whatever. Really? Anyway, it's a punch in the middle, so again, we we welcome our sponsor, Alec Bradley, and uh, Tia is going to tell us about our, our Alec Bradley cigar. Our cigar of the day is the Alec Bradley Mundial, which means global. The wrapper is Honduran, and both the filler and the binder is Nicaraguan and Honduran. The sizes are a 4x48, 5x52, and a 7x52, and the taste profile are mineral, spice, and leather. Just want to add that the Honduran tobacco comes from the Trojes region of Honduran. Wow. There's four fillers um, within the Honduran and Nicaraguan, and they have a heavy touch of Esteli Lajero. Um, real quick about the shape of this cigar, because it is kind of, you know, different and very unique. Um, they shaped it, the end shape, like lances from the knights that be on the horsebacks and stuff. And each shape carries a moniker which is a punta lanza, which means the point Monica. of the lance. There you go. Whatever this thing's nice. Isn't that when you just have one wow. glass? Wow. And what is doing so awesome, right? Monica. I know, yeah. You're, like, you're really, you're on Thank it. you. Oh, she was in France. Oh, and also I just want to mention that this is, the production is limited to 3,000 boxes of 20. 20 in each. I think we have 2,000 of them, though. Do we? <laughs> I think boxes of... The, the last production that, that we released, and, and, and look, this is a, a cigar that's in full production. Right. Okay. Uh, the issue that we have with this cigar, not really an issue, but what makes it so unique are the amount of tobaccos that we put into this cigar, number one, and number two, the shape itself. So if you can imagine that there's seven different tobaccos in this cigar, when we, when we, when we well, last time I was here, we talked about the Raices Cubanas. Right. You're gonna, we talked about complexity. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of complexity in this yes, cigar. Absolutely. There's a lot. There's a lot going on, mm -hmm. and that's what makes Mundial so unique. Mm -hmm. Before we get into it, Art, I'm, I'm kind of stealing your thunder. No, 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 I, no, 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 run with it. I, 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 go, I really, go, I apologize. Go, go. No, go, go, Steal. run with it. So this this cigar, and again, what makes it so unique is that this cigar is six years in the making. Alan Rubin, who's the president of our company, worked on this project for has been working on this project for six years. So six years, so six years ago. Alan actually released this cigar. Mm -hmm. It wasn't shaped this way. It didn't taste this way. And as he went to release it at the IPCPR, he said the blend, blend is not sustainable. It's not ready. It's not what I need it to be. And he hmm. pulled all of the production that he had already made and shelved the entire project. Wow. Really? It was Yes, and it wasn't until six years later, last year, right. that he was down in Nicaragua, Honduras, so it was actually like a year, year and a half, two years prior, and Alan decided, and Ralphie decided, this is it, this is it, this is, this is Mundial. It was nowhere on the docket. It wasn't what we were focused on at the time. They just knew that this specific blend was sustainable. Good. And, and that's kind of the, and, and because of the amount of tobaccos in the cigar, because of the complexity, because of how difficult it is to roll this cigar, that's why we're limited in production because we only have four people, a buncher wow. and a roller, wow. that can roll the cigar. We're so we have teams. two pair right now. Wow. Now what Alan has told me as of late is that we are, have been training for years the other roller and buncher okay. to two other sets. Mm -hmm. wow. So we're hoping to get more into production because the cigar, as you can imagine, um, 
it sells very well. And because it's so limited, that's what drives that price up. And right. I'm sure we're going to talk about that at some point well, as well. Can when I, you say, oh, so when you say it was not sustainable, can you explain it? Why is that? Because Absolutely. Of, because we know what it means. But we're, right. We're, we're, so we're, if a blend is not sustainable, at least, and I can't speak on behalf of all manufacturers, but as, as far as Alec Bradley is concerned, we want to make sure that this blend is the same that you pick up from the first time that you smoke this cigar to the last day that you smoke this cigar, years and years and years from now, which means we have to have the right amount of tobacco from the right fields, from the right farms, so that while we're cultivating that tobacco, once we ferment the tobacco, that we go through all the processes and the quality control, and when we have the cigar and it's rolled and it's aged, and you pick it up and you cut it and you light it, it tastes exactly the same. Mm. Now, how do you make sure? How do you know, like year to year, and like crops, in, in yeah. 2013, it tastes exactly the same as 2017? It's, there's, there's always. Well, let me just say this: there's always variations. The number one word that you hear when when you're down in Nicaragua, Honduras, or the or the Dominican is depende. Uh -huh. Everything depends. It depends on the amount of humidity, the temperature, yeah. whether you've got too much rain or you've got too much sun. Right. So we, we always try to focus in on our range mm -hmm. of what's acceptable because okay. this is a handmade, handmade product. Right. Right. So for us, we want to get as close as we possibly can, but we, we front load the cigars. The blend may change a little bit to make up right. or take away from a little right. bit of flavor. Maybe it needs a little more time, maybe it needs a little less time as far as fermentation is concerned. And that's kind of how the process is. But you have like one person who remembers, oh yeah, that's what this one tasted like. Absolutely. Well we have almost like like um with people. people who make with people who make pizza yeah. or people who make dough, yeah. you've got, you know, your your master that mm -hmm. you always refer back the to. Blender. Yeah. The tongue man. I call him so the he's like, man. oh yeah, this 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 is right. Yeah. Because it is hard. Because sure, each, each year's crops are going to be yeah, slightly it's different. different. Mother Nature. I mean, yeah. it, it's not man-made. It, I mean, it's not machine-made. It's so. How many can they shape like this in a day? Just curious. This cigar, I don't know. You know what, Tia? I would, I would have to, I would have to. Okay. No, it's. I think it's a great question. Okay. And I don't have the answer. I okay. don't, unfortunately. Yeah. Then why are you here? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know that either. I don't have the answer for that either. Uh, Jeez, they, maybe the geez, player. Geez. Maybe the player knows. No. Or are we putting no, you on the spot? Putting me on the spot there too. <laughs> I know less than he does. Yeah. Only because he said that there's only a couple that know how to do it. I just was right. curious. Right. Yeah, daily production. Uh, has to be I know very that. Small. I know that we limit our rollers to under 100 yeah, cigars a day. Yeah, oh, okay. okay. Under 100 cigars okay. a day. Yeah. That ensures quality control. So I my my guess my guess would be between the range would be between eighty and one hundred cigars a day, mm -hmm. but I'm not a hundred percent. I have to go to Ralph for that. No, that sounds about right. We yeah. years ago we used to roll our own cigars up here, and uh, in some of several of our stores we we had you know we had the bunch. Were of you stores. rolling? No, no, he wasn't yeah, rolling. She would do, she would own, do two bundles a day, right? Well, we used well, to knock out, we used to knock out for, for, each, for each row or about 125 no, no, no. a day. Yeah, that's, that's about pretty right. good considering it wasn't a team. Yeah. She did everything. She did yeah. everything, 125 yeah. a day. Yeah. Yeah. And these cigars are, are rolled in the tradition, a traditional Cuban style entubado, which means a, a lot of the cigars today, they're rolled in an accordion style fashion, and then they're placed together. This is rolled in a tubular spiral, fashion, yeah. in a spiral fashion, right. entubado. Entubado. No, you you know, got it. Like Knowing is half the battle. It is. <laughs> the other half is getting this band off and smoking it down. It's yeah. so good. I took, I took the second band off because I, you know, I, I knew about an hour and a half in, we'll I was going to start burning later. the band. Art, one of the things that I find so interesting about this cigar, as far as the flavor is really concerned, complex. is that it's super complex and it's yeah. really going to play with your palate because, I mean, guys, you're talking about seven different tobaccos mm -hmm. and you've got a double binder in here. Oh. So, You've got you've got that double binder that I'm talking about, seven different tobaccos in total, and even though it's not spicy or peppery for me per se, if you retrohale, you're definitely going to get yes. a little bit of that white oh, white, that white, that white that white yes. pepper. Yeah. Um, but of course, there's going to be a content higher nicotine content because you've got mm -hmm. seven yeah. different tobaccos yeah. in that cigar, yeah. so it'll hit you. It'll kind of yeah. <laughs> hit you right there. Right there in the head, especially if you're retrohaling. Mm -hmm. So Tia passes out in the middle of the show. I'm not retrohaling. It's the kind of cigar you probably want to have a belly fill, filled with food. It's Absolutely. a good thing that that, uh, that you're not hungry, Art. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've all had those moments where we smoked a you know high what I call high octane cigar, and uh, after smoking it, you 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 have one of those. 
I'm never going to smoke again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You lay down, and an hour <laughs> later you say, hmm, what should I smoke now? You know, I think everybody who's smoked long enough has mm -hmm. had those moments. Absolutely. But this, this is a very complex cigar. Man, that was good. It's really good. Rob, have I smoked one of these before? Yes, you have. I have, okay. Uh, Rob, Rob, yeah. Rob's my checker. I'm not always sure. I know. You, I know. And it's I know crazy. I know we're rating today. Rob, I know we're going to, you guys are going to give this a rating today. It did just get a, a pretty decent rating out in the marketplace, which we're, we're pretty happy mm -hmm. about. Nice. So we hope we get a good rating here today. Yeah. <laughs> no promises, man. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> now, as you all know, it's what they say is what you get. I mean, you cannot buy a rating you can't here. Buy a rating. Although, you know, you know, the check's big enough. Well, I don't know. Everyone can be bought. Every. Well, not me. I can't be bought. You can't buy. What? Me. I definitely. There's what? A, there's not enough money in the world. You I, couldn't buy me. I definitely can be bought okay. for nope. the right price, though. <laughs> Nope, not me. Some are cheaper than others. <laughs> Why wasn't you so lucky you're over Wait there today? Yeah. So Can lucky you're over Can there. Yeah. Yeah. This is a family so show. Where's this conversation going? Right in the gutter where it doesn't belong. Yeah. Yeah. Your hat out. We definitely swayed. We definitely swayed a little bit. Yeah. Wow. Well, I think it's time to go around the table and uh, get it. We'll start what? with Scott just, just to be well, safe. We, we can talk about a little bit about Sam. Yeah, we're well, gonna, gonna come back to that. I want to well, go down. I'm only at the, the nipple cigar. part. I want to oh. get a little bit longer. You know. Oh, yeah. so we should talk about Sam. Please. All right, I'm let's talk about this. Sam. What's your background? That was nice. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was that was brief. So I started. I started in the a young guy. I am. I so, but this will be interesting, Art. Oh, okay. Um, I started in the business uh, late '95, early 1996, and there was a uh, cigar shop in Naples, Florida. My father came home with what I like to refer to as the rear end of the cigar. There was probably <laughs> this, I mean, maybe this much left. Right. Almost what we what we call in the business as the nub. No. And he came home and I was, uh, I'd like to say I was 18, but I was not 18 at the time. <laughs> oh. So uh, again, oh, it's not, not, something, not something that we promote here your, your on the life show. Your prime started early. So my father came home and he said, smoke this. I'd never smoked anything in my life. And I said, I'm not smoking that. And, I, and he said, you got to smoke this. And he called me a foul name. We can all use our imagination. Yeah. And jerk. I smoked the cigar. Right, he called me a jerk. Exactly. <laughs> so come on, you jerk. And yeah. Anyway, so I started to smoke the cigar. And you guys will remember this from the boom. 96, um, late 95, early 96, there were like three flavored cigars on the market. Three prominent flavored cigars. You had that Island Amaretto, the West Indies Vanilla, and the Rum Runner. Rum this Runner. this was oh, the yeah. Rum Runner. Yeah. The Caribbean company. That's exactly yeah. right, right. And so that was the first cigar that I ever really smoked. And, and I fell in here. love with it. And I fell in love with it. And then I fell in love with the process. So I would go into this shop, mm -hmm. Heaven, um, which later later made their own line of yeah. Heaven cigars, which turned yeah. into Heavenly, Heavenly right. flavored yeah. cigars. Yeah. I went in, and the owner of the company said to me one day, he said, Sammy, you, you can never smoke a flavored cigar again. And I said, why? And he said, here's my humidor. So if you can imagine walking into one of your humidors, mm -hmm. and you say to me, you can smoke whatever you want, as long as it's boutique, because they didn't carry any of the major brands. There, were no, there was nothing major that was in there, no, no big swingers. Right. And so I started to mm -hmm. smoke. My first cigar after that was a Mikey Butera, and I moved on all right. the way up into yeah. even Lars Teton's at the time. Oh, right. I remember Lars. You know, so yeah. all of those he's things. He's still around. And that's yeah. how I learned. And, and, yeah. yeah, he's still around, right? He's, he's around here. here. Yes, he does. Yeah. He's, he's a nice guy. And I met and I met a guy named Rocky Patel. Yeah. <laughs> so right, Rock, I met a guy named Rocky Patel, and the, he's Rocky. just a little guy in the business. He's friendly, handsome, debonair. Anyway, Rocky and I became very good friends, and it was Indian Tobacco Cigar Company. Right. So that's how I got my. I gorillas, start in the business. Baboons. That's right. Chimps, baboons, uh, gorillas, gorillas, which was a six yeah. by sixty. Yeah, yeah, Cameroon yeah. legends, super fuertes. Yeah, you remember. Me. And that's how I got my start. So I grew up in the business with guys like Jonathan Drew and Marvin Samuel and Alan Rubin was yeah. was in there. At Tony Burhani, who is not around so much anymore, but nah. I mean, really prominent guys who were in and around the business. That's kind of how I was raised in the business. And and when when Rocky and I. Um, went away from one another almost about four years ago there was only one other guy there were two other guys i would have worked for in the business but i had my number one choice and i went and i interviewed with with alan rubin and ralph montero who owned alec bradley cigar company and literally fell in love with these guys for a multitude of reasons uh, you know rocky patel had gotten so big and i needed that that infusion of boutiqueness for mm -hmm. myself okay. but the boutiqueness and where alec bradley yeah, was at the time that, yeah. and 
you know, the team at Alec Bradley and the family at Alec Bradley is what attracted right. me the most. Right. The way that Alan treats his employees, and I'm sure that, that John could expound upon that. And so I've been in the business since 1996. I love cigars. I've worked with some great guys, the Endomondo family, who are our partners, and also the Nestor Placencia, Nestor yeah. Placencia Sr. and Jr., some of the greatest guys on the face of the earth, Nestor Jr. Real cigar guys. Yeah. Real cigar real guys. Cigar I guys, mean, yeah. Nestor's taken some, some unbelievable personal time with our team and myself personally great. over the years, so I've been able to learn a lot. And my, what my, my, my top influence, I'd have to say, as far as blending cigars and tobacco, have definitely been Nestor, Nestor Jr., and Ralph Montero, mm -hmm. who's uh, our senior vice president right. of the company and right. Allen's business partner. Awesome. And that's me. That's me in a nutshell. Are you from Naples? I live in Naples, Florida. My parents were hippies, so I was born in Strong, Maine, but I now wow. reside. I now reside in Naples, Florida, yeah, I and, and I, I work in Sarasota. So you do. I love Naples. Well, you got to come down. Yeah, we run down to Naples all the time. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Now I think it's time to talk <laughs> about the cigar. The the taste profile is absolutely dead on. Mm -hmm. I de I'm I'm getting those the the minerals. I don't know which ones I I don't know, but it's it's, a, <laughs> it's like a, almost like Box a metallic on the tip my tongue kind of flavor. <laughs> Um, on the retro hail, I'm especially I'm getting the, the spice. Um, I think you described it as white pepper, which I'll go with. Um, and I am getting the leather. Uh, very, very nice cigar. I, a little bit stronger than the other ones we smoked. Mm -hmm. This is like a medium yeah. full. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's full blown full, but when you do the retro hail, you definitely feel it on the top and the back of your throat. Yeah, there's a lot of nicotine in this. Yeah, for yeah, sure. It kind of it, 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 yeah. hits yeah, you, you can right taste there. It on the retro hail, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm. Um, I'm not getting mineral. I'm definitely getting a creamy taste to this. Yeah. Very Sweet. like buttery yeah. creamy uh, to this cigar. As soon as I lit it up, I taste. I got a real big hit of butter, um, which I really like in a cigar. Um, I do get the leather. It's very good on, through the retro hail. Uh, it's fantastic. It, it's burning evenly. Not that anybody cares. Um, <laughs> It is burning. Even. It oh, is. I care. I mean, but I mean, uh, usually when you when you have a shaped cigar like this, it doesn't burn it's even. It's hard. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But but it's actually it, this is very well constructed cigar. It's very good. Thank you very much. We, See? Believe again, me, we appreciate I, it. Again, I have to talk about the draw. I think that's probably why when you first light it up, you're getting that butter because it's just so easy to draw. Again, you know, you're getting a whole bunch of smoke in your mouth. Um, I definitely taste the spice. It's playing around in my mouth, so I like that. Um, it's really smooth. I would agree. The higher medium side to the full, maybe mm -hmm. like a you know less full but more more medium, and again impeccable in construction, and the band is gorgeous. Oh, she's a real band oh. person. I am. Like, she follows the band. Yes, I do. <laughs> and their and their models on there live true, so that's awesome. Yeah. True that. True that. Well, well again, <laughs> uh, you know, I echo everybody else's comments. It's a finely made cigar, gorgeous wrapper. I I too like the band. Uh, it's a stronger cigar than I'm, you know, my preference. But having said that, it's still a very fine cigar. Now, what do these sell for? This is the uh, Robusto size. It's eleven ninety five. All right, so it's a very limited edition. You know, they don't make that many of them every day. So obviously, with seven blends of different tobaccos, it's a little tougher to make and a little higher on the pocketbook. Uh, having said that, it is a cigar that can be enjoyed periodically, uh, but I warn you, once you smoke it, you may want to enjoy it more than just periodically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's absolutely worth the money, though. It is worth the money, which is yes. not, you know, we smoke a lot of high-end cigars in the course of our normal work week, and we do smoke some, you know, 9, 10, 11, 12 dollar cigars that we all look at each other and say, what the heck, this isn't worth it. Right. And clearly, like I say, we smoke them so you don't have to. And again, we try to bring you on our on our series of ratings and everything. We try to bring you the cigars that you will be able to find in your tobacconist shop. Uh, a lot of people say, "Well, why don't you rate this? Why don't you rate that?" And and some of these cigars are so narrowly distributed that a lot of you wouldn't know what these cigars were. Although in a lot of cases they they're nice cigars, but they're so limited. We may carry them, we may have them, but the reason we don't talk about it because there's so many thousands of you watching. That, that you won't know what they are and appreciate them if you can't go to your neighborhood shop and buy them. So, no, it's a good cigar. It's time to rate it. 4.75. Okay, I kind of, oh, so far. Man, I hate agreeing with you. I so hate agreeing. 4.76. Believe me, <laughs> no, they hate no. to agree with themselves. Yeah. Trust me, uh, I know. Yeah, 4.75, I never absolutely. Agree with I got a funny feeling I know where this is all headed. 4.75. Yeah, well. Ooh. Well, let's make the math even. It's gonna make my you math mean? even. 
It's a, definitely a four seven five for a lot yeah, of reasons. And, are, and the only solid. reason I bring it down from higher, price. I would have gone a little higher, is the price. Yeah. Because I, price yeah. is a component of our rating system. It's not a huge component because you know sometimes the difference between a seven dollar cigar and an eight fifty cigar, although it's a dollar and a half and it's twenty percent, it still is not enough to dissuade someone from buying. If you're already at seven, if you're gonna you know step up to a, a, a much better cigar, you're gonna spend a dollar fifty. So Absolutely. it's not like 50% of the rating. Mm -hmm. It's a very narrow portion so the of the rating. average is 4.8. No, yeah, I like this one more than the last one. <laughs> Where'd you what? go to school? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, I'm looking to you. Uh, what are we doing with Al Bradley during this month? Uh, actually, we've got a couple events uh, this week. Please expand I will. upon them. This Friday, that expound? This Friday oh, Jonathan's going to be in well, Freehold yeah, from yeah. 11 to 2, and then he's going to go over to uh, our Phoenixville store from 5 to 8. Um, we're running specials actually all month long. Uh, if you buy any 20 Alec Bradley or a box of Alec Bradley, uh, you can buy another 10, uh, a 10 pack for $10. So that's buy 20. Get another ten pack for twenty bucks for ten bucks. ten bucks. If you buy ten, you can get a five pack for ten dollars. Um, during th that's all month long. During the events, we're going to have other goodies and other Absolutely. specials. If you participate in the event and um, you get to be entered in to win a humidor, which is going to be a small cabinet humidor filled with Alec Bradley cigars. Wow, that's awesome. So it, again, it, it, I said this last week. This is my favorite of all the promotions that we've done. This is I love this one. I think it's really neat. Good. Um, and then, of course, uh, Monday, next Monday, the 14th from 5 to 8, uh, Jonathan will be in Westchester. And same, same deal. Um, th during the events, you still do the buy, buy 10, uh, buy 20, or buy 10, and, uh, but we'll throw in some extra goodies. And I'll be there. there. I'm going to show oh, up. Special yeah. cameo? Yes. Yeah. John, you're going to be everywhere, aren't you? I'm John, be everywhere. You guys, you guys got work most of, yeah. Wow. Well, that's what happens when you have nine stores. Exactly. <laughs> Got to dedicate some time to you guys, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Your jet car and roller skates. We appreciate You're that. You're paying for that, right? Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? Something I learned recently. Um, I affects learn the, all the time. The the, this was fantastic. It, was, uh, it really affects the price of the cigars. You know, they, we talk we talk all the time about aging cigars, or specifically aging the tobacco. Um, you know, they, they, they age it for a year, two years, three years, four years, whatever that is. And I had always thought that they just, you know, they throw it in a cedar room or an aging room and it just sits there for three or four or five years, whatever. Oh. And I recently learned, you know, as long as I've been around, that um, what they do is, they, it just doesn't sit in the room. They actually have to constantly break down the tobacco. Um, they, they, they take the stuff that's on the top and they put it in the middle, the stuff in the middle, in the bottom, and the bottom to the top. So it's very labor intensive. And that's one of the reasons that you, know, you have a, you know, two cigars that are similar, but one's the tobacco has been aged for three years, and another's been aged for five years, and that makes up a big mm. difference in the cost of a cigar. And you know, some you have some tobaccos that have been aged for ten years. So a lot Twelve. of a lot of what goes into the price of a cigar ha has to do with the labor that's involved with it. I mean, there's also there's other things, you know, packaging and the rarity of the tobaccos, uh, the shape of the cigar, but. The biggest component is is labor, and when you've got something that's been aged that much longer, that's 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 that much more labor. And I think a lot of oh. people don't 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 realize the yield per acre mm -hmm. of tobacco is oftentimes not as profitable as that's the right. yield of an acre of other planting. Mm -hmm. And that's why you know tobacco is a scarce commodity. Good tobacco is a <laughs> scarce commodity. Because you just you just can't throw the seeds in the ground and you know come back six months later and there's your plant cut it smoke it and out the door it doesn't work like that yeah if you if you studied and I think Paul in previous shows shows has explained a little of this if you study the total mechanic of, of, of seed to shelf it is a rather lengthy costly and complex uh, series of routines and it's often amazing. That you can get a cigar for you know five to ten dollars, which is the sweet spots. It's amazing that yeah. so much effort goes into a, a hand finished product. It's all done by hand, and it's just amazing that you can get a cigar at what I think is is, is a damn good bargain. When you think that you pay, I don't know, in Pennsylvania, I guess five, six, seven dollars for a pack of cigarettes, and most six. cigarettes burn up in five minutes, and you're out, you know, seven dollars or whatever. Whereas a good premium cigar, depending on the size, could be anywhere from a half hour to an hour and a half 
a smoking pleasure that you don't have to inhale to enjoy. That's the key thing. You don't have to inhale a, cig a cigar to, to get the full enjoyment out of the cigar. It's not physiologically addictive. You know, you equate smoking a cigar with having a good time, yeah. a good drink, or being with Relaxing. friends. Absolutely. Relaxing. Absolutely. Yeah. Relax. So, but it's almost touching like on the drink. For men. Touching on the drink, what would you pair this with? Good question. Well, it's it's interesting because we were talking about this earlier. One of our one of our liquor partners that we work with is is Glenn Fittick, and we actually did a deconstruction at uh, one of the finest whiskey shows in the world, the Universal Whiskey Experience, yeah. and we did a deconstruct appearance. So what what we did is we took all of the individual components from Mundial, we broke down the three major components, the three main ones. We put we rolled them into what's referred to as a purito. And what that is is one pure leaf of tobacco. Right. So we take that leaf, you smoke the pure leaf, and then we deconstructed with two guys, Mitch Beshart and the malt master, Brian Kinsman of Glenfiddich. So the actual malt master of Glenfiddich was on site, and he broke down Glenfiddich 15. So we smoked each individual component. So the first, the second, wow. and the third, paired with the first, the second, and the third from the Salernovat process of Glenfiddich 15. And then we drank Glenfiddich 15 and, and paired it with the Mundial. So overall, for me, scotch-wise, Glenfiddich 15 and Very a Mundial cool. all day long. Mm. Wow. Nice. Impressive. Excellent. Well, it's that time of the show again. It goes by so wow. fast. It was a half hour. No, it felt like hour. five minutes. Huh? Can you believe that? No. It went quick. It, it did. Quick. I don't think John said more than three words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, save he, that for next he week. Does, yeah. He does look pretty there. Yeah. He yeah. does. He's a handsome, you guys, handsome get on devil. The pretty you guys boy. are going to come back <laughs> next week? Yeah, right. I mean, if you guys want, I absolutely yeah, will come back. Yeah, we want to, sure. Cool. Yeah. Paul's out in the field. We need somebody yeah. up here. Hey, <laughs> college. Nah, only kidding, only kidding. Thanks for not showing up, Paul. We thank Alex Bradley again for being our sponsors. And I guess it's time to say a quick goodbye. <clears throat> Let's see short to smoke cheap cigars. <laughs> Hi, Mom. <laughs> Mom. Ciao for now, everybody. It was fantastic being here. Thank you. I it was me. Thanks for having us again. Smoke sweet. Bye, Dad. That's the most John said all the all show. Yeah. <laughs> that is the most We thank you very much for your patronage. We thank you very much for your viewership. And we'll see you next week. Bye bye. It's all going down this morning. We're just getting ready to go launch the first cigar into space. It's going to be an epic, amazing morning. We've got Alan Rubin here. <laughs> this stuff's going to be out of this world. Literally. The 59th floor, Las Vegas, Nevada. Phil Maloof's house. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna launch Mundial into space. Mm -hmm.